Hi, I'm Mark Smith with Macroscopic Solutions, and today we're going to be talking about how to shoot with the 20x objective. Uh, in previous videos, we used the 10x objective, and we showed you how to set up the Macropod using the Micro Kit. Um, so I'm going to jump right into this. First thing I'm going to do is plug in the stack shot. I always leave it unplugged overnight or whenever I leave the office. And I also drop the battery from the camera. Uh, I'm just going to plug that back in, and then I'm going to turn the camera and make sure can't turn the camera on and make sure it's in automatic mode. That way it's all set up and ready to go for whenever we uh, are ready to shoot. Now I have the exact same wheel specimen positioned on the stage. We're not going to move it. Uh, we're going to be imaging the same area of the abdomen, but instead of using the 10x objective, we're going to be switching this one out for the 20x objective. So one of the reasons why I wanted to turn this on is because what I'd like to do is back the stage up so I have a little bit more clearance to remove the objective. The other thing you can do if you're not quite comfortable with that level of clearance is loosen up the camera while keeping your finger on the, uh, the L bracket, the lens mount, so it doesn't slide forward and then tighten it up once you've slidden it back. Now what we're going to do first is take the empty case to the 10x objective and always when you're unscrewing this objective is use two hands. Uh, I'm just going to place one on the camera adapter to make sure that doesn't move off the lens and then I'm going to unthread the 10x objective using two hands. Um, again, these objectives are really, really, really prone uh, to damages through shock, so you don't want to drop these even from a small distance. So I have two hands, uh, making sure it's really secure. I'm just going to transfer it to its stage, screw it in, remove the diffuser, and then store it away to be used another time. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the 20x objective. Uh, that's what we're going to be using next, so just unscrew it. Again, unscrew the base. And go ahead and add your, your diffuser. The 20x objective util utilizes the exact same uh, diffuser as the 10x objective. And then you're just going to screw that with two hands directly into the adapter, making sure that um, you're not going to drop it. Okay, so that's in place. Remember this flat edge is for, for mo moving pin heads around, uh, but again, we're not going to need to do that because the abdomen of the specimen uh, comes out substantially further than where the pin is located. Uh, so we're just gonna rotate this so that uh, the larger edge is on the bottom, that way it picks up a little bit more light from the flash heads and reprojects it onto the sample. So I do have the camera turned on. Uh, just make sure it's in automatic. At present, it's in manual. If we turn it on automatically, the flash off will be able to see what it is that we're doing when we open our EOS utility. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on desk lamp so I can see what I'm doing as well. So now I'm going to open EOS utility. The other thing I'll do is I'll navigate to the same folder where we stored our 10x image, uh, which was in um, Active 2D. And then we'll open up the Weevil scales. So there's the 10x objective folder. We're just going to change this, create a new folder that says 20x objective. And we're going to turn on uh, remote shooting. And we're going to navigate to that 20x folder. Let's see, so active 2D, Weevil scales. 20x objective, and we're going to open it up and hit OK. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is open up our live view shoot, and we're going to move our camera back into the position uh, where it was before, and as well, we're going to start to slide the stage forward so we can bring the specimen in the field of view um, of this objective. So we're just going to keep pulling it forward until we see a section of the abdomen. Okay, and there we go. Um, so if you remember, uh, for the 10x objective, we ended up taking 135 steps. And that was because we were looking further down the body of the specimen closer to the thorax. Whereas in this example, we're only looking at a smaller section, so we're not looking further down the body. So typically, if I were imaging, let's say, uh, the wing of a butterfly, and I was using 20x as opposed to 10x, the depth isn't going to change all that much. So I would take twice as many photographs using the 20x objective. 
And typically, like I said, because this was an extra long specimen with a 10x objective, 135 images was appropriate, but typically I would take somewhere close to 85 images normally. So now that we're using a 20x objective, we're looking twice as close, but then again, the field of view is only half of that. Um, we're just going to, to basically shoot around the same number of images as we used for the 10x objective, which was 135. So for this, we might just step it up a tad. So we're going to take it to uh, 150 images, which I think is substantial. Uh, generally, 150 images is a pretty good number when you're using the 20x objective at all times. So I'm just going to enter 150. I'm going to make sure that my shot is nice and centered again, uh, just like we had it in the 10x. And it, and it does look like the focal plane sort of sort of connects on the left side of the image and the right side of the image in about the same place. So it looks like we're pretty lined up here. So now, again, we're going to stack from the back of this sample. So we're going to move the sample forward until everything's out of focus. I don't want to see anything in focus, not even a tiny sliver, just to be safe. That way we don't have to go through and capture a whole new set of images just because I didn't move back far enough. So that's going to be set. That's the start position, and now we're going to slide the sample back um, through and capture the end position. And, and one more thing I'll just point out is if you remember on the 10x objective, I showed you how basically how um, how bad direct light can be on a, on a sample that's as reflective as this one. And again, one thing I always just like to do is just show you and demonstrate how these diffusers are working just by placing my hand in front of the direct light path from this light uh, to the weevil. So I'm just going to slowly move it until the direct light is sort of blocked by my hand. And there you go. You can really see how, how even the light becomes across this sample. Uh, and again, that's what we're replicating when we have these little foam pads here on the side. We don't want any direct light. We don't want any bright glare uh, coming across, especially when you're focus stacking. So again, we're going to continue to move the beetle uh, backwards until everything goes out of focus again. So again, now we can't see anything that's in focus. Again, that's a good safety end position. So I'm going to go ahead and hit send for or set for end. And then I'm going to turn out my direct light source. And what we want to do is capture a sample photograph just to see what our lighting is going to be like. Now for the 20, 20 X objective, the types of settings you'll be using are pretty consistent with the 10x objective, but some things will change. Um, so if you note on this lens, nothing changes. It's still set to 200 millimeters. You're still set to infinity. Uh, you're still set to manual focus. Always when you're focus stacking, all the ultrasonic motors are turned off, and you're using that distance of 1.2 uh, meters on the side. So you're switched to 1.2 rather than 2.4. Now we have our flash on. Um, we are going to up the power of the flash a bit from where we were at the 10x, but the exposure will stay the same at 1 over 200. The aperture never changes when using this lens. It's always at f2.8. That way you eliminate any vignetting around the corners. And the ISO, we had it at 200. We're going to see if we can keep it there, but if we do have to change it, we will. Um, so what we're going to do is just open up the quick preview, and we're going to take the flash, and from 132, we're just going to power it to... Uh, 1 over 8 and we're going to capture a test shot so we're going to be about three times as, as bright as we were when using the 10x objective. So I've got my quick preview window open now. I'm just going to go ahead take a test shot and take a look at it. So here I can see my contrast is really good. Uh, the black areas are really black and the areas where there's a lot of color in the scales is really really even and there's not a lot of glare. There's no glare coming across in this image even though it's out of focus I can sort of tell. Um, now, if this was a little under bright, for example, so what I'm going to do is just take this back up to 1 over 32 and just show you what it's like if it's a little under bright. So I'll take a picture here, and you can see how dark that is. You get a little bit of color coming back into the camera, but not much. Uh, that's generally an example of when your lighting is not bright enough. And now we'll go the other direction to just 1 over 2, and we'll take another picture, and this one will probably look like it'll be okay. The dark areas are still going to be dark. However, you can see how a lot of the colorful areas are almost becoming bright yellow, bright orange, bright white. The, the image looks somewhat washed out. And when it does look washed out, that's an indication that you're too bright. So we're just going to take the flash back down to 1 over 8, which we know is a pretty good, uh, pretty good uh, setting. And there it is again. We're going to go back to our 20x objective, and we're going to delete those test images. 
From there, we're all set up. We're gonna be capturing 150 images, and now all I need to do is press start on the controller, and it's gonna move along and capture 150 photographs. And what I'll do is speed up the, the picture frame, and then uh, we'll, we'll come back and, and proceed once these images are, are finished being collected. Okay, now same as before, um, we can stop the stack shot because we can see that the focal plane has moved all the way through the subject. Uh, so what we're going to do now is just close the quick preview window and we want to open up our Zareen Stacker stacking software. And we want to navigate to the 20X objective and we'll just put a one behind that folder uh, so we don't conflict it with another folder that we create if we want to capture more images. Um, so we'll go ahead and drag that folder into the input files section in Zreen Stacker, and we're going to reverse the order. So remember, when we captured the images, we captured them back to front. But using all of the objectives uh, at 10x, 20x, 50x, and 100x, you want to reverse the order and stack from front to back. And that will eliminate any clipping from occurring on the outer perimeter of the image. So to do that, you'll go to File, Reverse Order. And now we'll start to stack. So align and stack all using Pmax. Now, one thing I just want to point out as this is um, as this is processing is is two things. One is how easy this this really has been as long as you follow a method, and the other is that in research, most of the time that somebody is using microscopy equipment, they're already turning to a microscope, a scanning electron microscope, a transmission electron microscope or they're already starting to utilize different light sources for adding contrast uh, to pick up on things like fluorescence for fluorescent dyes and, and, and whatnot. Um, it's really difficult to, to sort of convey the detail that, that's going to be present within this photograph, um, considering that that was made to look very, very simple. But realistically, with a 20x objective, we're shooting at around a 200x magnification range consistent with most uh, microscopes out there and our lighting has been perfected using reflected light microscopy. The system remains to be portable uh, and at the same time uh, we, we're capturing unlimited depth of field and we're getting color information. So it really is a fantastic tool if you utilize this equipment in the correct way and I really hope that this video does help you uh, help you learn to do that. Okay so this is finished processing so now what we're going to do is just, um, instead of uh, scaling it to fit the window, we're going to scale it up to 100%, so just like we did at 20x. And what I want to show you is, again, there's no Photoshop, no editing. Uh, basically, just follow the method using a subset selection of, of settings on the camera. Um, and this was the quality of our image at 20x magnification. Um, Please note that I'm going to be saving all of these images and that when we're finished giving the, the tutorial videos in terms of how to use the 10, 20, and 50x objectives, I'm going to show you how to Photoshop and process these images or apply a scale bar and even do some more complex measurements. Uh, so for now, what we're going to do is we're just going to save the output image, save it as a TIFF file, and we're going to save it in the same folder, um, 20x objective, just like we did the 10x. Um, so with that, uh, that concludes the 20x tutorial. Next is going to be the 50x tutorial, which again is very consistent with the 100x, so it's not, not really necessary to do the 100x objective. It's going to be kind of repetitive at that point. Um, but anyways, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. If we missed anything, uh, go ahead and ask a question in the comments section below. I'll get to it as soon as we can, or just give us an email or a phone call. Um, Outside of that, thank you very much for choosing Macroscopic Solutions, uh, and, I, and again, I hope this video was uh, very helpful for you.